On Sunday, February 26, 2012, at 7.22 p.m., Toronto Police responded to a call for a shooting at the DuPont subway station. A suspect approached the TTC collector's booth, fired several shots at the booth, striking the collector in the neck and shoulder. The suspect fled empty-handed. If you know this person, contact police or Crime Stoppers. On Tuesday, May 29th, the Toronto Transit Commission offered a $25,000 reward for information to help police convict this criminal. My name is Constable Tony Vella from the Toronto Police Corporate Communication Unit, and we will have two speakers today. The first speaker will be Staff Inspector Mike Grohl from the Toronto Police Hold-Up Squad, and the second speaker will be the Andy Byford, Chief Executive Officer for the Toronto Transit Commission, and they will be both updated in the media in regards to a robbery investigation that occurred uh, this year at the DuPont subway station. And I'll turn the podium over to Staff Inspector Mike Earl. Good morning and uh, thank you for attending this press conference. The Toronto Police, in partnership with the TTC, are looking for the media's assistance and public's assistance in trying to identify the individual responsible for the brazen and cowardly act that was committed on Sunday 26th of February 2012 at 7:10 p.m. at the DuPont subway. On this date, uh, an individual approached the collector, the victim, made a demand for cash while producing a revolver-type handgun. The uh, collector did not comply with the demand and the individual started to walk away. The suspect then turned and fired several shots into the TC TTC collector booth and the victim was seriously injured at that time. The investigation has revealed that this individual is also responsible for two previous robberies, the first one starting on Saturday the 11th of June 2011 at 9.20 p.m. at the same collector's booth, and then again on Sunday the 2nd of October 2011 at 7.55 p.m. at the same collector's booth. On the first robbery, the individual is wearing dark clothing and a medical type mask over the face, the individual is described as white, heavy build, somewhere in the age of 35 to 50 years of age, wearing completely dark hooded clothing, carrying some type of bag. On the last robbery, which we have most of the, the clues, the individual was followed down Spadina to McPherson by a witness. The witness observed this individual get into a four-door silver vehicle and speed away northbound on Spadina. The individual that chased the suspect has still not come forward. We've had several leads on this case. The members of the hold-up squad have been working tirelessly on it, but the leads have dried up. In partnership with the TTC, we're, com we're coming forward and asking for the media's assistance and the public's assistance, calling Crime Stoppers or the hold-up squad with any evidence or any information that we can get to identify who this individual is. A couple of interesting factors is this individual is carrying a revolver type handgun on each robbery. The individual is holding it in its left hand on each robbery and the individual's build is quite uh, distinguished. A stout build described as heavy. So any information that, uh, that the public can bring forward would be beneficial to this case. At this time, I'm, I'm going to just describe the individual as a white person. Uh, several of the phone calls that we have received have indicated that they, people believe that the person could be a female or could be a male. So I'm not going to be gender specific anymore because I really don't know if it is a male or a female. At this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to uh, the CEO of the TTC, Andy Byford. Okay, good morning everyone and thanks Mike for that introduction. Uh, so uh, you heard what uh, the inspector had to say. Uh, first up, we'd like to thank uh, the media for uh, coming along today. We do need your help and we need the help of people in Toronto to uh, find and uh, apprehend this person who did this to a member of our staff. So because we're serious about catching this person today for the first time, uh, we are putting up an award of $25,000 that leads to the conviction uh, and so the arrest and the conviction of the assailant of the collector at DuPont. So this is the first time we've ever done this. 
and I think this sends a very strong message to our staff that we will support them and to would-be assailants that we will not tolerate people attacking our staff. Fortunately, this is a pretty rare occurrence, but as the inspector said, this is the third time that this assailant has struck, and for that reason, uh, we, are, we are for the first time putting up this award, uh, reward because we need to take this person off the streets. Uh, this is a dangerous uh, assailant, uh, and what he did to my member of staff, to my colleague, uh, to all of our colleagues who work at the TTC, was outrageous, uh, and we won't tolerate people doing this to our employees. Because let's face, let's, let's call, this, uh, call this as it is, okay? This person has struck three times and uh, attacked our member of staff, potentially with the intention of killing him. So this is serious. So for that reason, uh, $25,000 is available uh, that leads to, the, to information that will uh, ultimately convict this person. And I want that to happen. Uh, we need to take this person off the streets. Now, we have taken a number of steps to make our station collectors safer. We are... Uh, reducing the amount of cash that's held within the booths uh, and we're increasing the amount of debit uh, transactions that are undertaken within our collector booths so that we can uh, have less cash actually within the uh, collector booth so to make it less of a tempting target which does of course also have a customer service benefit. We've increased the patrols by both uniform uh, police, uniform transit officers and plainclothes officials and those heightened patrols are happening today and they're going to continue. Uh, which again sends a strong message to our staff that we support them, but also sends a strong message to would-be assailants uh, that we have heightened our security measures and that we don't intend for this kind of thing to happen again. And there are other security-related measures that we've taken, but for obvious reasons we're not going to elaborate too much on them there. Ultimately, uh, we want to uh, move to a system whereby uh, customers largely use the Presto card so there won't be so much cash on the system, which can only be a good thing from a customer service uh, and a safety perspective. But coming back to the point today, um, we need the public's help to find whoever did this. This is a dangerous assailant, the third time that this person has struck, and this person needs to be taken out of circulation because we just won't tolerate people attacking our staff, my colleague, our colleagues, with impunity. So we do appeal to people today. We appeal to people's conscience, consciences. Uh, I would hope that there's someone out there who knows something, uh, who can give us information that will lead to that arrest and ultimately conviction. What I would like to say is the Toronto Police Service have been fantastic uh, in the cooperation they've given us so far. They've had uh, squads trawling through the areas uh, and have uh, conducted extensive investigations to try to find out who did this. Similarly, uh, I'd acknowledge the work of the, the union who have also supported our member of staff through what is obviously a really difficult time. And there's certainly no stone uh, left unturned for us in terms of helping our member of staff recover from what was a traumatic occasion. So uh, to, the, to the viewers out there, to the people of Toronto, please help us find whoever did this. We just don't want this to happen again because next time the result might be even more dramatic and we might be looking at uh, an even worse outcome. Please help us find out whoever did this. Thank you for your assistance in advance. I'll take questions. How was your uh, employee doing? Uh, I've stayed in contact with my member of staff. Uh, he's, he's making a good physical recovery. Uh, I've visited him on a number of occasions now. Physically, he's a lot better. The, um, the, the recovery is going well. He's been given good treatment, both by the hospital and subsequent to his uh, hospital uh, release. But mentally, uh, this is a traumatic event that's happened to him. So, you know, for obvious reasons, he's still pretty cut up about it. Uh, he's not yet back at work. We are giving him every assistance in, in coping with psychologically with what's happened, and for that matter, with his family. When is he expected to back at work? I don't know that just yet. I mean, certainly we're, uh, we're, we're not pressuring him to come back to work. He'll come back when he's ready. Uh, we're offering him every support, which is why personally as the CEO, uh, I've maintained contact with him. You know, to me, this is a shocking event that's happened. Um, this is pretty uh, serious stuff, and I certainly want him to feel supported as an individual. Uh, and one of the reasons we're putting up this award, as I just said, is also so that the staff in general feel supported. This is the first time we've ever done it. This shows the TTC means uh, business that we're serious about backing our staff and supporting our staff and protecting our staff. Why are you taking three months to come up with that award and to come up with more information for back to the 
Well, clearly we've been working with the police to try to catch the uh, assailant before then. The leads, as the inspector said, have dried up somewhat. Uh, so this is um, something unique. We've never done this before. Um, you know, at the end of the day, this is public money, so I'm not just going to throw uh, money around un unnecessarily, but we feel that this is such a serious incident and so such a unique occasion that it does warrant such a reward being put up. So, um, you know, if this is what it takes to get someone to come forward and to jog someone's memory or to jog someone's conscience, then uh, that's fine. I think that's money well spent. Let's remember, folks, that at the end of the day, uh, this is a very dangerous person, the person who's uh, car both carried and used a firearm. Uh, so uh, I want this person taken off the streets. So that's why I think it's worth putting up a reward. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that you're not sure if it's a man or a woman. Why would you even mention that it might be a woman when you know we hear Mr. Byford speaking about this man was a dangerous man? What what leads you to believe it may be a woman? Well, there's no leads that I have. Uh, numerous phone calls uh, from people that have called in uh, from the previous media releases, including people from the media, have identified or or suspected that the person could be a, a female and not just a male. So with that, I mean, I can't tell by the pictures myself, so we want to be gender, gender, gender non-specific just in case there is a female and we're, we don't want to focus in one direction. We want to be a wide scale here and, 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 and have a look at everything, every possibility. Inspector, this person has struck three times. Are you concerned that this person could strike again? Absolutely. We are on the eve of the fourth month and if you the calculation is it seems to be somewhere in the area of the fourth month uh, from June to October to February. Uh, for some reason, this is a bizarre set of circumstances, very unusual, four months apart, same collector booth by the same individual, and we are on the eve of the fourth month, which is, is gives us great concern also. Are you still focusing on that area and, uh, that you Well, we're focusing wherever the evidence will take us. The, it, right now, we believe that there because of the three robberies, there's obviously some familiarity to that area. The individual's gone to the same collector's booth three times, and our only lead is that, uh, other than the description that you see on the screen here, is that there is an unknown witness, and maybe the $25,000 will bring him out of hiding, who chased the individual to a silver four-door gray car. The witness described the car to a subsequent witness who advised the police that to this individual told me the suspect got in the car. We need that individual to come forward. The one that actually gave chase to this suspect to, to get what he saw or in this uh, foot chase and maybe he can describe the suspect even better or the motor vehicle even better. When uh, a person comes, uh, whether you're working in a, in a collector's booth or drugstore or wherever, when a person uh, holds a gun or a weapon in front of you, or both, what's your recommendation? To comply. It's to cooperate. I mean, the, the last thing you want to do is, is, is uh, cause a confrontation uh, whatsoever. But this individual, this was a cowardly act. This individual is walking away from the collector, several steps past the booth on the way to the exit, and turned and fired uh, several rounds into the glass. The individual was on the way out of the subway when, when the individual turned and fired. This wasn't a confrontation face-to-face, -face, uh, a fight over a gun. This was a cowardly, bizarre act. That uh, and I agree with Andy Byford that this individual needs to get off the streets. We're really concerned that this individual may strike again. Do you have concerns that this isn't uh, this isn't one of the only that uh, this person has um, not just gotten a TPC booth? There's and again, this is very bizarre. We have no information and no other occurrences that are linked to this individual um, other than these TTC robberies at the same collector's booth. So there is some. Strange circumstances uh, involved in the, in the entire case. It's not the normal run-of-the-mill robbery investigation. Maybe I missed, but how many rounds did the individual fire at the booth? I believe three. And did, did all three strike the collector, or was one of these rounds? Or? Several rounds. Uh, I think uh, I think all three did strike the collector. Sam Inspector, in the other robberies, were, was there a handgun produced? Uh, I said you did say they were all he was carrying a gun in the left hand. Yes. Now, in each robbery, the individual produced a handgun in the left hand, and it's very similar in each robbery. It appears to be a revolver. But never, never uh, fired shots before? Not in the first two robberies. 
Uh, 11th of June 2011 and the 2nd of October. All three robberies were on weekends. One was a Saturday and the next two were Sundays. What time? Time of the robberies? Uh, the first one was 9.20 p.m. The second one was 7.55 p.m. and the third one was 7.10 p.m. That's in chronological order? Yes, it is. Does this, you know, bizarre behavior going into the same location, you know, four months apart, committing essentially trying to commit the same crime three times, does this tell you anything at all about the suspect you're looking for? I'm not going to uh, try and guess on, on, the, on the suspect. I think the, the whole circumstances is bizarre to, because of the situation. Uh, they almost four months apart from each robbery, the same collector's booth. They're all on the weekend. Um, it's a bizarre set of circumstances, and we need somebody to come forward to give us a, a lead that points us in the right direction. And I still believe that one of our best witnesses would be the individual that chased this uh, suspect to the vehicle. Uh, you'd have to speak to corporate communications on that. Just, you identify uh, what kind of weapon he's using, what kind of handgun? It's a uh, revolver. I'm not going to discuss the caliber, but it's, it's, it's a revolver. A few more questions. Mr. Blackford, for the other two uh, collectors, were they, in, I know, were they traumatized to the point where they had to take time off, like the officer for the third guy? Um, I couldn't say for certain whether they actually took time off, but you know, at the end of the day, any such event is going to be pretty traumatic. You know, at the end of the day, you don't come to work to be held up um, uh, in in your course of work. You know, it's not this. It's, no one should have to expect that. So to have someone come up to you uh, and uh, threaten you with a gun or with any other kind of violence uh, and and demand cash off you or whatever is going to be pretty traumatic. So um, it's another reason why we're we're making a very strong statement today to say we're just not going to tolerate this kind of thing. I was wondering if you know their status, whether they did take time off. I'd have to check that. that. Yeah, I'd have to check that. Around the time when they were talking everything bulletproof glass and things like that. Is that something that's still being looked at at all the stations or is that a safety measure? Well, as I said, uh, it, we are investigating uh, other security measures. We have already introduced some additional security measures. For obvious reasons, I'm not going to elaborate on that today. Can you just, for the public, differentiate between the Crime Stoppers Awards or the TTC $25,000? Do you have to be anonymous? Can you do? Can you come forward anonymously, or do you have to identify yourself and make sure? Uh, I might ask Mike to take that one. And I would assume there's also a Crime Stoppers Reward as well. Well, we work in partnership with Crime Stoppers as part of the police. If an individual phones in anonymously, uh, we'd have to judge that information and to see if it actually leads to the arrest and conviction of the individual. Uh, we have had uh, higher than usual awards uh, given out to Crime Stoppers, but that would have to be something that I'd have to have a meeting with Crime Stoppers on. But we would accept any information that leads to the arrest and conviction. We would work in partnership with Crime Stoppers and the TTCs to ensure that they receive the reward that they're justified to get. Inspector, I'm, I'm trying to clarify here with the confusion over whether or not we're dealing with a male suspect, a female suspect. You say a number of people have provided information that kind of fuzzies the line there. What have they provided in terms of what makes them doubt that we may be dealing with a man here? Well, I think it's just educated guesses myself. I mean, there, a lot of the individuals, including the press, have, have approached me and saying, sure, this isn't a, isn't a female uh, by the stance and, and by the build. And, and So I can't rule that out. Um, it's, it's more than once. I mean, I'm getting crime stoppers are calling in th thinking that it may be a female, and I'm getting people in the public saying, are you sure this isn't a female? So I don't want to get a tunnel vision here. I want to make sure that we're looking at every possible suspect that's out there. And uh, it, it's quite possible it could be a female. So I don't want to close any doors. What's your gut say when you look at the pictures? What's my gut? <laughs> I think I think you're you're hearing what I'm saying is I I don't know. Oh. I mean I've been in Toronto 33 and a half years and I've seen everything. So <laughs> after those, last question. After those first two robberies, were there any additional security measures taken at Dupont? Uh, yes, at Dupont and at all other stations on the system, was that and that that included the uh, heightened security patrols that I previously mentioned that are still in force. So there were even, even with these heightened patrols and less money in the fact that who's this person still came forward. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question. Uh, I thought you meant after the, the most recent. Um, the most recent. Uh, 
<laughs> that, that predated me. I'd have to check my facts on that. Um, but with, with any incident that happens, any security-related incident, as a, as a standard practice, standard operating procedure, we would always review what happened and have a look to see if there's any additional measures that we could take. Uh, and I'm confident that would have happened on both of those occasions. Okay, this concludes today's conference. Thank you for attending. You'll be able to find the images of the suspect on Facebook, Twitter, as well as on the Toronto Police uh, webpage. Thank you.